Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do some of the windows. I do have my example sheet of different styles of windows, and we're gonna go ahead and do this bank here. Uh, that's the simplest way, uh, just to see how to line those up in perspective, uh, and the doors as well. I'm gonna start with this first building here. Anytime you're working on the right side of the building, you're using the right vanishing point. Anytime you're working on the left side of a building, you're using the left vanishing point. This is for every single building. It doesn't matter if it's on the left side, because um, here we got this one on the left side, but for the right side of the building, you use the right vanishing point, and for the left side of the building, you use the left vanishing point, okay? So we'll start here, and I'm gonna do uh, three rows of windows. I'm going to make sure that my ruler is lined up to my right vanishing point for my right side of my building, and I'm gonna pivot it up. And I'm gonna decide how much space I want above my building, or above my windows. Keep it on that vanishing point and pivot it down, decide how tall I want those windows to be. Go ahead and draw across. Pivot down again, I need just a little bit of space. So I have, again, room between the windows. I wanna try and get it kind of equal, but it's okay if it's not perfect. About the same height as the other windows. Pivot again. Each time I'm still lined up to this right vanishing point. You'll notice I'm pivoting the ruler. I'm not turning it, or sorry, not sliding it down. Okay, there I have my three rows of windows. Now to get the vertical lines, because it's not going to be just one giant long pane of window that would you know, be terrible to fix whenever it breaks. I'm just gonna give myself itty bitty little marks so that I know how the spacing is gonna work for these windows. And you can make them, you know, spaced really close or really far, that's up to you. I need to line up that little mark with the ruler lined up to the bottom of my paper. So it's nice and straight there. And then I'm only going to draw between the top and bottom lines of the window, picking my pencil up after each time. If you draw all the way down, that's okay. You just have to erase the extra bit there. And then all of my windows are lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this. Lined up there. So I've got row of windows that's all lined up and I just keep going until I get to the end On the other side, I'll go ahead and show how to do the windows that have space all the way around them. Okay, last one. Okay, so on this side, uh, we'll do the windows that are spaced all the way around. Um, we're on the left side of the building, so we're using that left vanishing point. And we still want, even though there's gonna be space here, and it's, the windows aren't gonna go all the way to the corner. Um, I want to make sure that I line up the tops of the windows and bottoms of the windows at this center line. So I'll go ahead and start here. I'm gonna go from the bottom so I can kind of see a little bit better. Okay, line up the bottom there. And that actually uh, is a bit too dark. Uh, I probably want to go ahead and draw these a little bit lighter, and I'll show you why the difference there between the bottom line that I drew really, really dark and the other ones, because there is gonna be a fair amount of erasing related to this, so that way everything is lined up and I have space around each of my windows.
Okay, there we go. So what I need to do is whenever I make my little notches for the vertical lines, I need to leave space in between. So this space here, I would end up erasing the lines that go all the way to the edge. And then I decide, okay, I want this window to be really big. And then there's the space in between. And then here's this window, the space in between, and my last window. So I'm only gonna have three windows wide on this side. I'm going to line up each of those marks. I would line up flat on the bottom. And again, I'm only gonna draw between those two window lines. These I can draw darker because that part's gonna stay. And I would go ahead and erase the extra right there. Line up here. And draw this nice and dark. And oh, forgot that. So here's where you're gonna see that at the bottom here, well, it's you can still kind of see the mark that I originally made because I drew it pretty dark. So one, two, three. I would erase in between there. Now I have my first set of windows that is completely surrounded by concrete or wall. set of verticals and then it's also a good idea afterwards since I drew some of these really light uh, going the other way to go back and darken up some of those so I would line this back up with my vanishing point and just draw a little bit darker between the two verticals so that way I have a nice crisp line at the top and bottom of each of these windows. Okay, so that just looks a little bit more crisp than these ones down here. So I would wanna be really careful and get that cleaned up. Okay, for doors, um, any building that we can see on the street level, we wanna go ahead and have a door. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the right side first. I'll be lining up with my right vanishing point. And I pivot and decide how tall I want that door to be. And I only need to draw as wide as I want the door. That's a pretty wide door, but sure, why not? Maybe it's, you know, well, no, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. That's way too wide. There we go. So just as wide as I want my door to be. I'm gonna give myself three marks down because I want this to be um, double paned glass doors line up to the bottom of my paper and to my mark and then I just draw all the way down to where the bottom of that building is and go ahead and take care of that okay there we go it's that simple for your you know simple door you can put your handles in there if you want dots or lines. If you're doing lines, actually, it's best to, again, line up to the vanishing point so that you know that they are in correct perspective and draw that there. Okay. Um, we also have, if you were going to do a sign, I'm going to show you how to do letters in perspective on this side. So if I'm going to have a sign, that's going to be the top of my sign and the bottom of my sign. Again, we're working on the right side of this building, so I'm working with my right vanishing point. Um, I'm gonna make this a uh, cafe, so I'm just gonna have it say, you know, coffee, or I'll do cafe and then have a little coffee cup afterwards. If you think of when you first started learning to write and you had that paper that had the line at the top and bottom and then the dashed line in between, that's pretty much what we wanna do right now is give ourselves a little bit of a guideline for that. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room there. 
still lining up to my right vanishing point each time. And I wanna give myself just a little notch there in the center so that I know it's about even. Line that up with my right vanishing point. Okay, so these really light lines are where I'm gonna be writing my letters. So for an uppercase letter, it needs to touch the top and bottom of that. So this is gonna say cafe and have a little coffee cup at the end. For a lowercase letter, it's only gonna go between the middle and the bottom one. Okay, and these are both rounded. For our next one, the F, it's got a straight up and down vertical. So it's actually best to use your ruler, line it up so that the bottom is lined up to your bottom of your paper. And for that vertical, I didn't draw all the way because then it gives a little curve at the top there. But that way your vertical is nice straight up and down. For the cross part of the F, we're not going to draw it flat like we would normally. It's going to be along this center line. So it needs to be, that's why we have that guideline there, so we can just use that uh, for the F. For the E, I'm going to partially draw that. And you'll notice these letters get a little bit shorter as they go back into the distance. And then for that bottom line there, that does need to be done in perspective because it typically would be flat. Um, but it's at an angle right now. So we're gonna line up to the right vanishing point. I'm gonna move down and get the bottom of that E and then meet that back up. I can erase the extra right there, okay? If I wanted to, I could put my little accent sign there. And now that I have these words, I can go ahead and erase the guidelines. And those are going to be in proper perspective. And I've got plenty of room at the end of my sign to draw a cute little coffee cup. Okay, so I'm gonna, this part doesn't have to be in perspective itself necessarily, because we don't have straight verticals. So there's my little coffee cup. We'll have like a little heat line coming off of that. There we go. So now all this building needs is a, a little bitty door. If I want the door to be the same, you know, height visually, um, it is going to get shorter as it goes into back in space. So I would just line the top of this door back up and draw how wide I want this door to be. And give my three little marks there. It doesn't have to be a double door. Maybe I just make it a single door, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a double door again. There we go. My doors aren't even, but that's okay. And I could decide maybe I want like a big window over here, um, but you can just add on what you want. All right, there you go. That's how you do windows and doors.